my whole goal was to bring like the practical benefits of the pra like yoga and meditation practice to the masses. All the associations that people might have towards something like yoga or meditation, I mean, it's gone much more mainstream, but like when I first started teaching yoga in LA in the early 90s, I was, you know, my early 20s, I was like met with so much resistance and even cynicism toward this yoga thing. Yeah, yeah. And my whole goal was to bring like the practical benefits of the pra like yoga and meditation practice to the masses, like out of the gates. I had this goal. And so to to your question like how to make it available was really always right there for me because there was just a cynicism there was no agreement in the marketplace or so when i started teaching in these like popular fitness facilities like in hollywood and beverly hills i mean people are like well yoga's weird or it's the idea of getting it's too quiet i can't be still for that long but i had to start developing a language you know, a presentation of the practice. So I coined something called power yoga back then. I was like, well, no, here's like, you can get focus, you can get balance, harmony, you de-stress, you get a strength, a, a physical strength, but also once you get in your body and grounded, you get present and start putting, I started putting into a language that anyone could understand. And once people would walk into my classrooms back then and have the actual experience, and, and the nice thing about a power yoga or you do hot yoga, you know, the movement is engaging and then you're breathing with it. And pretty soon, again, that lowercase I, so that disappears. And you, when you really experience the practical value of the, of the practice, suddenly the resistance starts going away. People walk out of the, you know, every session, as you probably know, like you just feel lighter, freer, whatever you walked into the room with, it's like gone. It's like a new beginning. And uh, I think resistance is hard to talk your or think your way out of. But when you actually move, you get in your body, your breath, and you get still in that sense, it develops a new kind of confidence too, I think, because you, you, you have the, a confidence to know you can change your mood in a moment. You can change your state, your mental state, your physical state. You have the power to change that. You're not a victim to that, but you actually have the power to affect real change in yourself. And then that I, opens up a different outlook toward work like your career, work, work, relationships you're dealing with, your health in general, but and then just the problems and stresses and challenges of life that we all deal with. But I think it develops a kind of confidence when we have practices that require a discipline, but also that confront resistance. I think it's so key that we have, everyone has some kind of discipline, some kind of practice that confronts one's own resistance.